Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from grayflorals.com and today is a new day. We are making page kits. Um, so this is kind of going to be my how to kill a kit with style kit share for the month. We'll be making my page kits together today. I am going to continue with my DC photos. I'm going to roll with that album. I just kind of want to switch out the page kits that I had made. Um, I am keeping the ones I already created together as well as their embellishments. But today we're going to be making the page kits together. So, by the, you might have seen this in most of my videos, but a lot of my photos are either outside or in some beautiful, beautiful buildings um, inside DC, like beautiful buildings. Um, so I was struggling with the pastels or in museums, a lot of museums as well. But I was struggling with some of the pastel kits that I'd made um, to use some of these photos that I'd wanted to use. So, in an effort to do that, I'm going to switch gears I'll keep these photos out for reference, but I'm going to switch gears and kind of go more down a vintage neutral path with my page kits. So I'm not doing just from paper pads today. I will be using loose paper as well from my stash, but I did pull out some ideas for some inspiration as well as some of the supplemental materials that I will be using as well that'll be included in my kit. Um, but I'm going to be going over all of the picking out of the die cuts and stuff and stickers and items like that over on my Patreon. Um, so that's their exclusive uh, item for the month is going through that. But I will be doing the page portion here with you guys in case you guys wanted to see that. And if you guys didn't see January, I went through all the steps of making my page kits here on YouTube and I have a whole playlist of that. So let's get into the inspiration that I picked out. I picked out four small paper pads. This is the DCWV Trade Wind Stack. It's got a lot of gold foiling, deep reds and blues and neutrals. I think this will be great for layering my photos on for a lot of those uh, beautiful buildings. So that's going to be included in my kit as well as this KI Memories Vintage Charm Paper Pad. I think there's like maybe eight sheets left in this one. Again, deep rich browns, um, even some florals to keep those lighter notes and then some butterflies. So these are double-sided and this will be finished by the end of February, ideally. I pulled out the My Mind's Eye Yes Please by Jen Allison Collection. Um, this has got that creamy color to it. This, this does not go in here. <laughs> Um, but I just brought it out for the foils and the blacks. Um, I think that'll help provide some contrast that I need to go against some of these beautiful items. And then I pulled out my DCWV uh, Insta Photo Fun 4x4 cork pack. So this is just 4x4 cork sheets that I hopefully can use. Now as for 12x12, 12 12, I do have my paper clips out here, but I did pull out some paper pads to be inspired by to maybe incorporate. This is the Kane Company Terry Conrad Sweet Life 12x12 12 12 designer paper pad. And this is from, oh, I don't think there's a year on it. This is old. I don't even know where I could have gotten this from. Maybe they carried this at Joann's, I'm not sure. But like this one, I know I could probably use. Some of these I know I won't be able to use, but like this one I could probably use. So I'm hoping to pull in some of these into some of my kits. And I am not pairing my photos with my kits again this time, mainly because I know that I've looked through my photos a couple times and I know that I'll be able to use some of these items. So. This is one that I want to pull from for my page kits, as well as this one. Now, if you guys remember when I did my paper pad sorting, these two were in my, uh, what did I have, expiration date section. Um, they live past their expiration date. So this is me trying to use them before they uh, go away for good. This is the Basic Gray Fact paper pad. Um, I can see myself using this one, not so much this one. Um, again, some of these are very, very not me. I can use this number one just fine, maybe that blue one. And again, sorry about the lighting. This one was really fun to use the first time I used it, but maybe I could use it again. Um, so maybe we can pull in some of those. So I'm gonna clean off my desk and then bring over some stacks of paper to go through with you guys so that we can make some page kits. So to start us off, I pulled out my vintage paper pad sec or paper loose paper section. And then I pulled out my multicolor section. These are two that I don't go to very often but I think could be very useful in this um, sort of page kit making process. So I'm gonna start with the multicolored mainly because I wanna start using these more often. Um, this one's from Fancy Pants Atwell. It's okay, I don't really feel it. This one I do love a lot. So I think I'm gonna pull this one. This is American Crafts, not sure what. I'm just gonna set them aside for now. Um, I know the multicolored ones probably won't like, get put together in one uh, section. Usually I go for pretty, more like one big one, one not so patterned, you know, you know how I am. I don't mix too many patterns together. I don't get too crazy. So I'm just gonna go through this. 
I really like this one as well. It doesn't have that vintage vibe, but I do like it a lot for the simplicity of it. So I'm going to pull that one too. Again, we might not use all of these, um, but I am going to pull them if I think I can use them. And I'm trying to stick away from pastels and such since we did so much of that last month. Um, and again, I'll have that playlist linked down below so you guys can check it out if you're interested. And essentially I'm just looking for what grabs my eye. And that's it for the multicolored one. I don't have many in here. Usually I sort them into a color or another. Then we go through my vintage one and I have a feeling I'm going to pull out a lot more of these. I'm going to pull out one of these wood grains. Now this is the thin paper from Joann's, but if I were to use this with uh, like another paper behind it, it'll be fine. So I'm going to pull that one aside as well. Music notes. I think this one's fun. I'm trying to see if I'll use the cutter parts at all, but I think I got this from a local scrapbook store. I think I'm going to pull this one. It has those deeper reds and greens and yellows like I was showing you in the 6x6 paper pads. Oh, this one's perfect. This one's Fancy Pants Home for Christmas. Good. I like these journaling blocks a lot. This was just a rack that I'd gotten, but I think I could use some of these um, journaling sections for my layouts. This is slightly used, but I do like the... Um, creamy colors in this um, and the fonts and I think this would be good for making embellishments for my page kit and that's from Pebbles. Now here's where the fun begins. I have several of these types of papers. Now this is just random really thin paper that I have um, but I really like these United States ones. I think it's really fun for DC especially. I wonder if I can see it on here. Yep it says Washington DC right there. It's very hard to read but it's there. I'm only going to pull one of these only because I don't think I'll use them. Um, and again, very thin, but if I'm keeping it, I should try to use it. I know, I know. There's this one. Now, I think this would make a great uh, double page spread, something like this. Sorry again about the light. Let me see if I can move my... There we go. And so this would make a good double page spread. It does look like there was water damage, but I also think that, yeah, that's just part of the paper. <laughs> that got me concerned. And again, I have no idea where these are from. There's nothing on the back. This is the other side of the United States, and I'm going to save that in case I do go over there. Um, I don't see a reason to use it. Most it pertains to something historic in the photos. Okay, so those were all those vintage papers. I had a small avalanche uh, with my uh, lighting here. Let me just fix that up real quick. There we go. I can't win with this lighting, man. So these ones are just um, like plain colored cardstock. Nothing too, too fancy there. Then I just fix the light. So I'm just looking through these. I think these are all by Doris, if I recall correctly. And like I mentioned earlier, I won't be going through everything today, just the page portion of the page kits, um, because it's very time consuming to share the whole process. Um, but I am going to try to share all of that over on my Patreon, so if you guys are interested, I'll have my Patreon link down below. And if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a paid uh, sort of reward system where you support your favorite maker or creator, and then you get rewards in return. And mine are live streams and extra videos. I'm trying to debate if I want this deep brown color. I think I'm going to include it. It's a very nice quality um, cardstock. So now we have like a decent amount of papers pulled out, I'd say. Um, I'm going to keep going though because I want to get more. Um, so I'm going to go grab some of my colored stacks and put these ones away and then I'll be back to share with what we pick out next. Here we have my neutral stack. Um, so I'm just going to again go through this and pick out some items. Um, as you can tell, some of these are from paper pads, um, which doesn't mean I won't pull them. It just means that they're not loose papers. I do put them back. Uh, I will, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm just fumbling through my words. I don't always put them back with their paper pad um, if I don't think they need to be. Um, a lot of times I'll just file them away into my system. These are the Jen Hadfield Heart of Home collection, and they're beautiful work. Um, I think this reminds me of the architecture. Um, in all of the different buildings that we went into. I like that one. 
I love a good specialty paper. Now, most of these are pulled because of their front sides, um, but I always tend to look at the back sides when I'm making kits because I think this is a very beautiful paper for the kit. Um, however, I didn't think the polka dot was really um, worthwhile. You see that I'm not only picking out creams and such, I do pull out some other types of papers to get a variety in there. This is from Pink Fresh Studio Boys Fort. Both of those were. This is Authentique Bountiful 8, which this is nice. I really like this cut apart as well, but I think I'd get more use out of this side. I believe this is a Halloween paper, black with a light orange polka dot. And of course you can pull more papers than you end up kidding. Um, since most of this stuff will automatically go together, it's fairly neutral, um, I do uh, pull out some extra stuff. Now I really am saving this one to use this side, um, otherwise I'd pull out this nice wood grain. And then I'm also looking for things like mood and feel, like I don't have anything bicycle related, but this sort of ledger reminds me of some of the stuff we saw, so I'm going to pull this out. And we're back to the last one. So that's it for the neutrals. I am going to go through my paper pads now that are uh, that we pulled out, so the basic gray and the Kane Company. I'm going to start off with the Kane Company because this has a lot of color in it, and I think it might inspire some other choices. So we got some cut parts, and again, they are double sided. This is very difficult to look at. Some of these are very, very, very obnoxious, um, if you ask me at least. Um, so I really like this. This was before you had to, this is when they used to stitch the paper pads together. So I really love this blue side and I think it'll go well with a lot of stuff we pulled. And I'm gonna pull both of those because I feel like it'll become a double page layout. Just have a feeling. And you saw in my January, if you watched my January uh, kits, you would know that sometimes I um, did opt to go for a double page layout and I ended up just finding um, either the same pattern paper or pulled it from a different kit to supplement it to make a double page if I wanted that same paper all the way throughout. Now some of these will be clearly a challenge. Um, I think I could work with this one. Now, don't quote me on that though. We never, you never know how it's gonna end up. But like this, I could never use that. They're beautiful though. Don't get me wrong. Oops, I just ripped that one. I don't, I'm not fond of that peachy orange color. Um, and then these ones are nice, but I just don't think. I, there's one day we went there that I'm kind of wearing a shirt like this color, but I guess I'll pull it. I'd rather pull it and then use it than let it rot in this <laughs> paper pad. Um, and I'm not going to pull that one sure, but one, I just can't get behind it right now. So there's that one. And then the fact paper pad, which I think I'll only pull a couple out of, to be honest. I used all the ones that I loved. Um, that's what usually happens with our paper pads, am I right? And, this, and sorry if you keep seeing this paper bounce in and out. It's blocking all of the light that's trying to flood in here. So I'm just going to move it down for you guys so you don't have to watch it flutter in and out. Pulling out this yellow one. Again, this is kind of bringing in more of the color that I was looking for. Um, for these page kits. Um, and I do need something a little bit more neutral, a little more past, not pastel, but more subdued. Pastels, we, I picked very bright pastels, but um, poor paper. Oh well. And then the stuff that I don't use after these page kits, I think will go. I'll either give it to somebody I know or donate it to a local school. Because shipping's so expensive with 12 by 12. So now let's take a look at what we have done so far. What our stacks looking like. We've got a lot of papers here. Now I'm not saying I'll use all of these. Um, I'm not saying that I won't use all of these, but we got quite a big stack here. Um, that's pretty decent. Um, and I don't really know where to start now. Last time I did kitting, it was a lot easier. I just picked one and then found a kit for it. This time I just went to get a bunch of related papers that I wanted to use since I know the project I'm working on and now I'm going to kit them. So it's a little bit different this time than it was last time. I'm going to start with this uh, flower double page that I'd picked out. I think that's going to be the hardest one to try to kit. But immediately I think of this green paper 
Let me move out the background pieces so you guys don't have to look at those the whole time. But immediately I thought of this green paper that I pulled out, and I think that one's from uh, Heidi Swap Magnolia Jane Collection. So this beautiful green would be great. And then maybe even one of these. Oops, I grabbed two pieces of paper there. Like this uh, gold craft. But I think that's almost a little too empowering. There's that one. Especially with the green, I think the ledger would be too much. The gold polka dot, the black polka dot. Okay, I think we found something. I'm going to go with these four together. Cool. It's funny, they used to make 12 by 12 paper, 12 by 12, no branding strips. I can't remember where the heck I got this kit from, but first page kit, done. I don't know what my aim is for this month. It's a short month, so I don't really have to worry about it. So now I'm going to go in and pick something else out to create a kit around. Let's try this key paper. That one's fun. Hmm. I'm not sure where I want to go with this one, mainly because it has a lot of options. There's just a lot of different ways I could take it. But maybe I should start with picking out... I don't think they have any of these colors. Maybe... This one's similar. It's really not, though. They're very, very different. Uh, actions. I know that this one has... You can't really tell, but this is an orange polka dot, so I think that goes together very well. Even though you can't really tell. It does, to me at least. And then we do one more. And so this is Simple Stories. I almost forgot what it was from. I think the houses would be too much. And I think I will have to pull in some cardstock for this one. I think it's going to be difficult otherwise. And some of these I like both sides, so it's really difficult. Hmm. I don't want a second polka dot. And then some of them are sticking together. Oh, that would be nice, because that green's very, very identical. And I could use both sides with this. So this is almost like a four-pager, um, except it's three. And when I kit my kits, I use coated paper clips, um, if you caught that in the last video, so that the if there is any rust that develops on the paper clips, I don't have to worry about it, because these ones don't rust as fast. Because they're coated with... It must be plastic. I'm not 100% sure on that, though. But there's also several different dividers, like... Um, accordion dividers um, and I have a video showing how I stored my kits last month in case you guys are interested and I think that's in the playlist link down below as well but when I do clip my papers together I do make sure the most prominent uh, pattern is on top that way when I'm flipping through them if there's like this orange is in only this paper and if this one was the one on top I might never know that this would perfectly match a photo or something like that so two page kits done I will say that this is a time-consuming process um, but I find it very fun, so it's really up to you and how you think of the process. This one I knew was going to be hard to work with as well, but I pulled it because, I don't know, I figured I should probably use it. I just saw one that I thought I might go with. Now I can't find it. Is it this one? Mm, I don't really like that either. Might have to put that one back in the pile. Sometimes it's just hard to get going on making page kits. Um, like I did last time, the paper pads were much easier for me to work with. They were very, very similar color schemes, so I didn't have a hard time doing it. This time it's a little bit more difficult. That's why I recommend either having at least an idea of what type of page kits you want to make, or at least have something you're making your page kits off of, like a bunch of different photos. I think that helps a lot. I like those two together a lot. That's Pink Fresh Studio and then American Crafts. No idea who this is from. Um, let's pick out one more. Maybe one of these guys. I think a polka dot would be rude. I like all the geometric stuff going on here, so I don't really want to ruin that. Maybe just... Mm, I really feel that either. And I try to mix old with new. I think that's another great tip, is if you keep pulling from your old stuff you might get a little bit bored of it instead of pulling from new stuff i think i do like this one the best but there's so many colors in these houses i feel like i should go look at my colors again you know what i mean i looked briefly through my colors and while there is a lot in there i think that this will prove to be more useful for the types of photos that i have i'm really iffy about this brown i'm not sure why i'm gonna kit it and then 
usually I can just change my mind later. I'm gonna pull this double pager as well before I forget, um, just to have it ready to go. So we got that beautiful, beautiful blue. Then I'm gonna pull this side of this one, give it some nice dark contrast. And I'm also developing um, some homemade page kit recipes. That way, if you guys just wanna try to make a couple homemade page kits, you have somewhere to start exactly what you should grab. Um, and then I'll have example kits as well. So when I think of a double page uh, layout, I often think there's nowhere to put my journaling. So I, th I think if I cut one of these out, I think it'd be good to go. So I'm gonna count that as four. Um, double page kits for me personally usually rely a lot on the um, on the uh, six by six and smaller paper pads um, to kind of build up those photo layers. So I usually often look through that. So that's four done. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's pull out this guy here. Again, I could go tropical route with this one, but I'm trying to stick with what I got here already. Kind of testing myself and what I could use to make it work. Not really feeling that one. I'm putting this one back in the pile too. Um, I've used some Cane Company now, so I'm, oh, I'm okay that I've used some of it. I haven't used any basic gray yet though, so I should probably use that up. But all the other pretty papers are prettier. Let's pull out this wood grain. It should be easy to pair something with, but it does have that pink tint to it, which I think may prove to be rather difficult. Now I think this would look good with it, just like this behind the photos and then this being the background. Maybe. Maybe I should pull this kind of this one in. That's, a, that's too much. <laughs> that was a little too much going on there. So now it feels like, so when I get stuck like this, I often feel like I didn't pull enough, but clearly there's enough in here. So I'm gonna do set these two aside. They're not kitted yet, but they are gonna be separate from my pile. That way I keep looking through my pile and hopefully finding solutions for these ones before I go back and look for something for those ones. Let's try this one again. Well, not again, but let's try to match them. Match it up. I think just sticking with that color scheme might be the best choice. Um, the last time I used this number paper was when I did mixed media on top of it. That's when back then I just used 112 by 12 per layout. Essentially, I just put six by sixes and smaller scrap pieces of paper as the layers. I kept them very simple when I was in college because I didn't have everything with me. So that's five, I think, page kits. So we're going somewhere, we're getting somewhere. I'm gonna pull this one. This one's different than all the rest, um, but I really, really like it. Again, that geometric feeling, um, as I was talking about the architecture and stuff I was trying to highlight in some of my photos is just difficult to work with because of what I pulled out my last kit. But again, it's just not proving useful for this uh, selection. So I think I'm actually gonna put that one back. This is my neutral section next to me, in case you're wondering. Um, and that leaves us, so wait, I have five page kits. Again, February is a slower, shorter month. Well, I wouldn't say it's slower. It's, I have less scrapbooking time, so it's busier for me. Um, so I have less scrapbooking time. This one might be a four pager. I might pull in the fourth. See, I think a green would look pretty with this, but I don't want these two patterns competing because this is a damask pattern. This is like a tile, a pattern you'd see on tile, essentially. Um, but I, I like it. I do like the green in here. I think I switched these three. Yeah, there we go. I think that looks better. Okay, we'll try that. I'm gonna put the this brown line in front. Not the green this time. And again, this is the Jen Hadfield Homemade Heart of Home paper set. Um, I bought these, I think from Paper Issues when they uh, had a huge sale, a couple. No, it was definitely last year. I think I only put in one paper, two Paper Issues last year paper issue orders last year. So it's at six page kits. Again, it's okay. I still have January's to work with. I'm keeping those together. We also have this guy here still, and I think I found a solution. I think I'm gonna include this as part of this page kit. Um, I think cutting out a bunch of these. Of course, some of these are very card oriented, thinking of you, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you. But like these cute ones can be popped out 
like a bunch of circles of these mixed with these two would be really cute. So I'm going to put this one in the middle because it's not a full sheet, just in case it gets damaged. I want it to be in the middle so it's like, you know, nestled in there. And I might hate these page kits tomorrow. It's okay. You can always take them apart. It's not that hard. That's the good news. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven page kits. I think I might try to get to 10. I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. See, when I see this one, I just want to use the whole sheet itself by itself. You know what I mean? But I think maybe, well, that light just blinded me. I don't know if you guys saw it when I brought the paper up here. There was a lot of light on it. But anyway, I think maybe something like this where that's a little background piece, maybe. Again, maybe. I have no idea. Hash on the back of this one. Again, I'm relying on the colors from the paper pads that I'm choosing, sort of looking at the smaller papers. So the six by sixes and the four by six mat stacks um, as the like main color providers for this um, series this time. But I think maybe it's like a, maybe a title page for my album. Maybe this would be good. We'll try it, but I have no idea. I'm not a professional scrapbooker. <laughs> that one's a little too loose. I don't know if this one's long enough. That one's also not coated anymore. That one's not long enough. <laughs> Again, coated paper clips, guys. If you don't have coated paper clips, you can do other things too. Just dividing them with uh, scrap sheets of paper or something. How many set did I say I was going to go to? Four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight done now. And I think maybe I should pair like... Like these two go so well together because they're from the same paper pad. And then I'm left with, I have three sheets of paper left. <laughs> so that's where we stand there. And I don't know that I have anything that would really go with these. So we're kind of at a standstill. The way I did this was a little bit off, it's fine. So what I'm gonna do is take another look and see if I can pair any of these with something for my stash. Again, I didn't go through all of my colors of paper because I was relying on my six by sixes, my eight and a half by 11s to provide that color for me, just so I can use other types of supplies, not just my 12 by 12 papers. Do you know what I mean? That way we're having a focus on something else besides just our 12 by 12s, because we often focus on the 12 by 12s and neglect the six by six, the all the other sizes we have. So I'm gonna go look through my stash to pair these off and then I'll come back with you guys um, to share those kits. Um, but I think that'll bring us to 10 or 11 kits and then I'll be able to share with you guys those and then that'll be my kit for the month. Um, and then I'll be going over my embellishments throughout the series when I make my process videos. But um, let's go find some matches for these. Okay, so that went quicker than I thought. I simply pulled out my yellow and orange sections and that pretty much solved all of my problems. So here's what we ended up with. I kept these two basic gray ones together. Um, just this weird yellow tint's hard to match, so they're gonna stay together, but I paired them with this beautiful October afternoon Saturday morning's paper called Crepes. Uh, I don't really love this side. Actually, I hate this side. I love this side, so I think I think we could do something together with this. So I'm gonna kit that one together. And we'll go over all the kits at the end too, don't worry. So this one was a little bit harder. Um, so this paper is obviously very orange. I ended up finding this. It's practically a perfect match thanks to this ombre. Um, this is actually from an old DCWV project stack. So I could have cut apart all of these items. I had two of these in that paper stack. I cut apart one and then kept the other for the project side. So I'm gonna keep these three together actually, including this, this one. I think that if you did something like this and this was layer behind photos, it would make more sense. Um, so I'm going to kind of keep them like that. I don't know how I'm going to use them for my DC album, but that's what I've, that's what I've chosen. So hopefully they get used during that or something. I don't mind if my kits get taken from some other project. That doesn't bother me. Then I kept this one fairly simple because I don't know again how I'm going to use this one. Um, again, I have tons of photos, so I don't know. Like this photo would look great with these papers. There's lots of options, but I just kept this one to two papers. Um, these are fairly new to my stash. This is the Pink Fresh Studio Indigo Hills. This is a Lawn Fawn um, yellow. Again, I bought this from Paper Issues last year, but again, I don't buy a lot of 12 by 12 branded papers. I often go for the paper pads or um, maybe a collection kit, but I hardly buy papers. So I'm going to include these ones as they are. And I suppose I could turn it over as well if I want to go for something completely different. So this page kit collection is a lot different than my last one. I did make it smaller than my last one. January had 18 page kits. 
which I did not kill, as you guys probably saw from the January, um, oops, don't worry, I just dropped the coordinating paper pads, um, but as you guys saw in the January, uh, wrap-up, I did not kill those, uh, kits, but they're still alive and well, I'm keeping them to keep using, um, but let's go over the page kits, you guys just saw this one, but I'll show you guys again, just to do a last overview here, these three here, beauties, so we got an orange one, Am I missing? I'm confused. Where did this third paper go? So I laid them out a little bit better here. Sorry for that, my camera died, but here's these three. These three, you see them all sticking out here. And again, you'll see all these probably when I sift through them for my page kits. But if you have any specific questions, please leave them down below. I'd be happy to answer them. I already showed you guys that one. This one with the pop of green. Again, not as cohesive as my last month's kit. Last month's kit, everything went together because everything was from different paper pads and all the paper pads went together. I kind of took the easy road out last month. Um, this month I had a little bit more of a challenge creating the page kits themselves, but I am really excited to work with them. A bunch of different color schemes. Um, and again, if you're interested in learning more about my page kit making process, I will be doing that over on my Patreon this month. So check it out if you haven't already. I have it linked down below. And then this one, which we just put together. But I hope you guys enjoyed pulling these page kits with me. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you're doing page kits this month, I'd love to know. Um, and check out everyone else linked down below for the How to Kill a Kit with Style collab. Um, lots of lovely ladies join us every month, sharing their kits and sharing what they made every month. So I hope you guys find some inspiration here. Let me know which of your kits was your favorite um, and which one you think is a mistake because I'm sure a lot of these have a lot of wild options in them. So I wouldn't doubt if you felt like one was a little crazy left field. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed as well because I have more coming. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.